Welcome back for lesson three. Today we're going to learn about working with the working with text and learning the basics. So we want to add text to our work area. We're going to go over here to text. Whenever we click the text button, it's going to bring up the text style button, but you can always come back to the text styles by clicking here on this icon. So we're going to go ahead and add some text in. Now once we have our text, we can choose the font that we want. You'll find your fonts here. And as long as your text is selected, you can just hit your down button and flip through the fonts that you want. <clears throat> when you find your font, you'll notice you can make it bold, italicized, or underlined. This is not available for every font. This is only available for the fonts that the typesetter created for those features. Now we can align our font. We will align our font within the box that you see, not within your work area. So we can center our font or left or right justification. Um, here we can change the direction from horizontal to vertical on our font. Um, we can also change the direction of our font by using uh, this tool here and just rotating to the position that we want it to be. Or we can just go ahead and move it as well. We can change our font with the text size button. As well. Here we can adjust our character spacing, which will adjust the spacing in between each of the letters. And here we'll adjust the line spacing between the lines. Now if I decide I wanted to change the size of this box, I can double click and I can really bring this in if I want to make it different uh, lines as well or pull it out. Text kerning, um, I, for the longest I thought there was a problem with it, but then I realized in this program certain fonts kern and certain fonts do not kern, and I'm sure that has to do with the typesetting. Uh, and kerning is the space between specific characters, not the spacing between all of the characters. Like here, this would be the spacing between all of the characters. It changes. There are certain characters that are visually um, better kerned than not. And like I said, this doesn't work for all fonts. And as you can see, kerning off, the space between the V and the A, is greater and it doesn't really look good on your eyes. So if you turn the kerning on, it'll bring that in without affecting the space between the T-I-O-N. Now not all fonts have this. When I look at this font and I try to kern, there is no effect. Now we'll go into how some of the script fonts behave when being cut. Um, I'll go ahead and just change this to a script font. Now what I want you to look at, and we'll zoom in on this, um, and when I put my character spacing back to 100 to where all the words are together, when I look at the actual cut of this, I go into my regular cut settings, we'll do it that way, you'll notice that the R and the E's are cutting into each other. So something you will want to do to avoid that when playing with um, cursive fonts is you're going to want to make this font, um, you can do it two ways, cut properly. You can do cut the outside edge of the font and it won't cut You'll see your cut line disappeared on your R and your E. 
or most commonly what people will do is they will go to their modify tool and I'm not getting too much into this tool and they will weld it but once I weld it it is no longer a font it is now a graphic so to speak and I'm just going to back out of that um, another thing I wanted to touch on which I'm not sure I explained earlier or not is I can also change the way my font I can stretch it out as well just by sh uh, stretching out the text box um, and I think that concludes the basics of fonts we will get into more detail with changing fonts shapes and so forth in the next lesson or installing uh, new fonts onto uh, the program uh, hope to see you for lesson four y'all have a great day